So let us start. Uh, hi, everybody, and uh, welcome to the virtual seminar of the International Institute of Physics. It is a pleasure to introduce our speaker today, who is Reinhold Egger from Heiner Heine University of Dusseldorf. Reinhold received his PhD from the University of Stuttgart, and he spent a few years of, as a faculty at the University of Freiburg, where he received his habilitation. And since 2001, he is a full professor at the Heine Heine University. His field of research is condensed matter, physics, uh, strongly correlated electron systems. He studies systems like graphene, um, Majorana fermions, and more generally, topological phases of matter. For his research, he received many different honors. I would like to mention the physics prize of the Göttingen Academy of Sciences and Humanities, and the Gerhard Hess Prize in Heisenberg Professorship from the German Foundation for Research. Reinhold is also a frequent visitor to Natal. He is, in fact, a member of the International Advisory Committee of the Institute. And he is, in fact, present in Natal physically now. Uh, and, but for due to high demand and also technical reasons, we have this seminar online. I would like to thank uh, Reinhold for his support of the Institute over the years and also for agreeing to give this talk today to us. So Reinhold, we're looking forward to learn about anomalous Josephson effect. We can see your screen and you can, you can see everything. I'll your full screen you. now and we can see your pointer. Okay, so uh, thanks, uh, Dimitri, for the kind introduction. And it's a pleasure to be in Natal again uh, after the corona break, the pandemic. Uh, it's wonderful to be back. Uh, and we all hope here for a change of government uh, real soon. So uh, the talk uh, will be on anomalous Josephson effect uh, and superconducting diodes. Originally, I also announced topological Josephson effect, that would be a bit too much, so I will only say a few words about the connections to the topological Josephson effect. And before I start, let me acknowledge the uh, collaborators, mainly Alex Sasunov, who is a longtime member of my group, Thierry Martin and Thibaut Schoenker from Marseille, and uh, our former PhD students, Arishit Kundu and Aldo Bonetti. So the plan for that lecture is I uh, will uh, start with an introduction uh, to the Josephson effect in nanoscale uh, systems. This has been studied experimentally over the last two or three decades. And the current phase relation, so uh, in, in equilibrium, the uh, supercurrent that depends on the phase uh, across such a junction uh, can then be largely explained in terms of so-called and uh, also say a few words about the effect of interactions in such nanoscale. The main part of the talk is about the anomalous Josephson effect. Anomalous Josephson effect uh, is if uh, you have a supercurrent flowing at zero phase uh, bias. So without a phase difference across the Josephson junction, you still get a supercurrent. And uh, I will discuss the conditions and also a recent experiment that, that has seen uh, the anomalous Josephson effect. And uh, this topic is around 10 to 15 years old, but it regained a lot of attention in the last two years after the discovery of superconducting diodes. And now this is really an exponentially growing field. Uh, which is why I also decided to speak about this topic now. Uh, if time permits, at the end, I will say a few words about interaction effects on the anomalous Josephson effect, which can greatly enhance this. Effect. And feel free to interrupt if there are any questions or comments. So let me start with a reminder. What is the Josephson effect? You consider two superconductors, and uh, throughout we just talk about plain S-wave BCS superconductors. So the left and right superconductor, they are characterized by a pairing gap, delta, and a phase of the order parameter. 
And we assume there is a phase difference across uh, this junction, so the tunnel contact here with some tunnel amplitude lambda uh, uh, separates the two superconductors and you get have this phase uh, dropping across the junction. Um, Josephson in the 1960s, he showed that the transfer, the tunneling of Cooper pairs with charge 2E uh, induces on the perturbative level, uh, Josephson energy that depends on the phase difference. It's given by this expression. The refactor is the Josephson coupling and in perturbation theory, it goes like lambda square. And it depends on minus cos i. This energy, this Josephson coupling energy is minimal. So the junction really prefers to have zero phase difference, then it's in a sort of stable uh, equilibrium. And one calls, therefore, one calls such a junction a zero junction because pi equals zero is the minimum, global minimum of the uh, uh, energy. Now, even in equilibrium, a uh, current can flow in such a device, and you get this current by taking a derivative of the free energy, basically a phase derivative, and multiply with the charge of the Cooper pair divided by h bar. If you do it for this expression, you get the famous Josephson relation. The current phase relation is given by a critical current times the sine of phi. And the critical current, of course, is determined by the Josephson current. Now, that's textbook material. You have probably all seen that uh, uh, as a student sometime. It's a dissipation with supercard. Now, in the uh, last 20, 30 years, it has been realized that uh, the Josephson current is also Superconductors switch uh, by a suspended carbon nanotube that acts like a quantum dot. So electrons can hop onto this quantum dot and out again on the other side. And so the Josephson uh, junction is actually formed by something uh, that looks like a small electron puddle. So you have discrete levels where electrons can live. And uh, if the level spacing on this dot is very large, you can describe it by this, the famous Anderson dot or Anderson impurity model of a single spin degenerate electronic level. So uh, in, in this case, you can have an energy, a single particle energy epsilon naught. You can put either spin up or spin down electron on it. And up or and down is either zero or one. If you put two on the dot, you have to pay a Coulomb energy, a charging energy, uh, which suppresses a double occupancy. Yeah, and this level epsilon naught, you can really change by gates, uh, by finger gates. And this dot is now coupled by tunnel matrix elements to the leads. There's a left lead and a right lead. These are the BCS superconductors with the pairing gap. And for simplicity, let's assume a symmetric case with the same pairing gap and a phase difference. So this, uh, uh, the energy scale associated to the tunneling is called the hybridization, gamma. And uh, if you can take the, the non-interacting dot and uh, the normal metal case, so delta to zero, this is just a resonant tunneling. Electrons can tunnel from one level to the other side, and uh, the transmission probability for this uh, channel is given by the Pride Wigner formula given here. And you see if the level is at zero in resonance, you get full transmission. So every incoming electron is transferred to the other side. Tau is equal to one. That's full transmission, but also says it's a ballistic or open link or unitary link as opposed to the case when epsilon naught is strongly off resonant, then tau is very small and you're on the tunnel limit. That's the limit considered by Joseph. In this theory. So in the short charges of this type at a single electronic level, you can easily uh, study the crossover from the tunnel limit to this ballistic limit by changing for instance, this level epsilon. If you look at the spectrum for this type of setup, you find two types of uh, electronic states. For one, there are extended for Golubov quasi particles, 
they can be scattered or transmitted uh, on, on this junction, but they live at energies above the gap. Yeah? And then below the gap, inside the gap, there can be bound states. These are the so-called unbrave bound states. They have a subgap energy always comes symmetric around zero at plus or minus EA of phi. And they depend on phi, on the phase difference. And for that reason, they carry current. And these bound states live basically close to the junction. They are exponentially decaying away from the junction into the superconductors. In the non-interacting case, one can solve this problem analytically, and you find uh, this formula for the Andreev bound state energy dispersion as a function of phase. How was our transmission? And the prefactor delta tilde is just delta if uh, the hybridization is large against the pairing gap. In the opposite limit, that is the superconducting atomic limit, so-called. And delta is the biggest scale of interest. You have to replace it by this. So let me just show uh, that after I show you the current uh, phase relation. So uh, the supercurrent for such a short junction is now carried by the Andreev states. In fact, there's no continuous of the short junction. So at zero temperature, you will just fill the lower Andreev state, this minus EA. And the plus EA is empty. So you directly get the current phase relation uh, in this form by taking the derivative. And we can now check the tunnel junction limit if tau is very small against one. Uh, the, the square root in the denominator is just one. And you recover the standard Josephson relation with the critical current given by this formula. So you see the critical current is uh, proportional to transmission. That's the Ambegaroka Baratov dimension. So we recover the Josephson relation now in the opposite limit if tau approaches unity, you're on the unitary resonant tunneling limit. This uh, 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 current phase relation becomes strongly non sinusoidal So, in other words, higher harmonics will become important. If tau is equal to one, you can write down this expression, and you see the critical current is much bigger than. In that case, so in general, the, the critical current will be large and you get a, a non sinusoidal current phase relation. Let me just show that here. So, the Andreev spectrum in this non interacting case uh, is shown here. They have the minus EA and the plus EA. Delta here is just pi, the phase difference. And you go from zero to two pi. So, in the ground state, you will occupy this state depending on the phase uh, and uh, this one is empty so the current phase relation looks like this no? as opposed to the sine function in the deep tunneling so you see it's already non-sinusoidal that's for the tau of 0.96 if you go to tau equal to one you have these Andreev states they cross here and now for a phase difference below pi you say on that branch and then you switch the branch when you switch the branch, basically, you jump in the current phase relation down here. So it's still two pi periodic, but this is designed by half with the thick half function. It has a jump at pi. And uh, that's the, what you get for the, uh, for the uh, current phase relation in such a resonant tunneling uh, device. And on a more general note, the Andreev states can be thought of as artificial atoms. Yeah, you have uh, basically inside the gap well resolved uh, uh, energy levels, discrete energy levels at the given phase difference. You can tune these energy levels by changing the phase difference, and you can induce transitions between such levels by microwave spectroscopy. In fact, you can even build qubits out of them, and it has been shown that these have really uh, long uh, lifetimes and very, very good properties. So they might actually become a leading candidate for quantum computing at some point. And if you want to read more about the experiments, there's an excellent paper by the Saclay group of Christian Urbina. In 2015, we have recently done a work uh, on the theory of such uh, Andreev uh, atoms. 
So let me comment on the effect of interactions. So if we now switch on the interaction on this dot, so the U term is the Coulomb charging energy on this dot. And here the most interesting regime is the one of large U against gamma and having this level epsilon not below zero. If it's above zero, uh, you, you, you will never put any electron in, into the dot. If it's too far below, you will always put two into it and it's inert. So the interesting case is the single occupancy regime. In this window, you want to put one electron into the dot, but it can have spin up or spin down. So the dot is equivalent to a spin one half impurity. And so you have basically two superconductors with a spin one half in between. And if you now uh, uh, look at the Josephson uh, current phase relation for very small coupling, gamma, in perturbation theory, you find a so-called pi charge. By that one means that there is a pi shift in the current phase relation. So starting from the Josephson uh, relation, you shift by pi, that's equivalent to saying you have a negative critical current. Pi equal to pi is now the global minimum of the free energy of this charge. This has been in 1965, very uh, shortly after uh, the original works by Josephson, by Kulik. And uh, that's called a pi junction. In that case, Cooper pair tunneling is forbidden, but then there is a fourth order so called co tunneling process, which is possible and reverses the spin ordering of the Cooper. Now, if you increase gamma, but still keep it small against U, uh, we can expect that so-called condo correlations must develop. If you uh, mentally switch off the pairing in the leads, you directly see it's a spin one half talking to conduction electrons. And we know then uh, there is an energy scale, so-called condo temperature for the normal state, which is written down here, if you put the epsilon zero in the middle of this window, so to the best value. So this scale defines uh, the many body scale and at lower temperatures than TK, uh, the, the spin one half impurity gets screened by the conduction electron. So it forms a spin singlet, it gets entangled with the uh, conduction electrons and forms a many body resonance pinned to the fermion. But of course, the superconducting gap competes because we remove now uh, the low energy degrees of freedom in the leads. Basically, we have a pairing gap. So there's a gap for the uh, electron states. So the question is what is going to happen? So in numerical work, we and others uh, some time ago have shown that the physics of this problem is uh, universal in the sense that it's governed by the ratio delta over TK. Uh, that's the only number that matters. And uh, one finds that this many body condo resonance pinned to the Fermi level can coexist with superconductivity as long as delta is not too big. So there is a, a quantum phase transition then between the zero junction, which would be this regime, where you have a large Josephson current. Actually, the current phase relation comes out exactly as for the unitary limit without interaction. So it's a large Josephson current. In this limit, uh, there's a phase transition to the pi junction at a value of about one. Yeah? And then uh, once delta is bigger than TK, the superconducting gap removes the low energy modes to an extent that uh, there is a complete suppression of the condo effect. And uh, uh, I cannot resist to uh, mention our Nocier Fermi liquid theory, uh, which uh, has been generalized to the superconducting case. So with that, you have an analytical theory for this regime, for the zero regime uh, dominated by the condo. So this, uh, this uh, picture of zero pi phase transition has also been experimentally confirmed uh, shortly after the predictions. Uh, so this was for instance done in this uh, paper uh, that I show here by Wernsdorfer's group in Grenoble, but also later groups uh, in Orsay that did beautiful experiments and, and revealed further details of this uh, crossover or phase transition. And uh, in these experiments, you take a superconducting squid. So the gray material is a superconductor and there's a carbon nanotube uh, 
defining a reference junction and here the actual dot. Uh, and your finger gates with which you can tune the energy levels and also the, uh, the tonal couplings. And uh, just look at this picture here, which shows the measured current phase relation. You can vary the phase drop across this dot by changing the flux, so the magnetic field, the flux through this loop. And by that, you can measure the uh, current phase relation. And this curve here would be in a deep zero regime, dominated by the condo effect. This curve is in the deep pi regime. You see there's a pi phase shift. And here, these two curves are close to the uh, critical value. So much for the uh, introduction. Let me now uh, come to the main part, uh, which is on the anomalous Josephson effect. So by that we mean that uh, there is an anomalous supercurrent I sub A, which is the current at phase, phase difference zero. If this is non-zero, then one says there is an anomalous Josephson effect. So a supercurrent flowing without any phase gradient. One also says this is a phi not junction because if you take the Josephson relation and shift phi by phi not. And you see, if you plug in phi equals zero, you have an anomalous current given by IC times sine phi. So if phi naught is different from zero and pi, you have uh, an anomalous Josephson effect. So uh, if you pause and uh, briefly think about how can that be, how can you ever have such an effect, uh, you quickly realize there are two necessary conditions. Uh, first, you have to break time reversal symmetry. So, for instance, apply a magnetic field. And you have to break inversion symmetry. If the junction has either time reversal symmetry or inversion symmetry, you have this relation. The current is hot under reversal of the phase difference. But if that is true, you immediately have uh, zero anomalies. So you definitely have to ensure, but it's not enough. Yeah? So the question uh, is then what are sufficient conditions, not only necessary, and it turns out you need spin orbit interactions with the game, and that is still not sufficient. Yeah? So I will discuss now the sufficiency conditions based on our work here. Uh, this will be for the non-interacting case, and later I will discuss uh, more changes with interactions. And uh, you see this paper is already uh, uh, quite a few years old. The question is why is this now interesting again? And the, the, the point is that in uh, 2020, Ono's group in Japan uh, has discovered superconducting diode behavior. And this is predicted for phi not junction. So in fact, phi not junction behavior or anomalous Josephson effect is a necessary ingredient to have a superconducting diode. Uh, it's not sufficient. So we will discuss what you really need to have this uh, superconducting diode where a, crit uh, where a supercurrent flows only from left to right, but in the other direction, you have no supercurrent possible. Yeah? So only a, a dissipative quasi-particle current can flow in the other direction. So in a sense, it's a dissipationless rectifier. And uh, due to the fundamental and, of course, applied interest, if you think of what the diode uh, uh, meant in the development of, of mankind, uh, this is now a dissipationless uh, uh, rectifier. It could also have technological impact. So this is a very quickly growing field. You discover almost every day a new paper uh, on superconducting diodes on, on the archive. Yeah, so uh, a very nice experiment is by Strunk's group in, uh, in Regensburg, Germany, and uh, an, a nice uh, theoretical work uh, is by Leon Strunk's group. But let's first look at the, at the anomalous Josephson effect and consider a general model for a two-dimensional uh, quantum dot for now without interactions, and we will take into account spin orbit code. So in these uh, uh, condensed matter systems, typically it's not the atomic spin-orbit coupling, but a, a band structure effect called rush bar or trestle house. I will here focus on the rush bar uh, uh, type uh, spin-orbit coupling, which comes from interface electric fields. 
and uh, the Dressel House case can be treated very similar and it is treated in our way. And we include an in-plane Seemann field. So uh, in-plane means there is no orbital effect and that's the simplest way how you can break time reversal symmetry. And we will see this is an exactly solvable problem. Yeah? So we, we, we consider N relevant orbital energy levels on this uh, dot, which forms the Josephson junction. So these levels are called epsilon N and they're defined without spin orbit, without a uh, Seemann field and without coupling to the superconductors. So you can always specify real valued spin or wave functions, chi N for these uh, states and uh, for convenience, let's orient the tunnel contacts uh, such that they are on the x-axis at plus or minus L. So the dot Hamiltonian then looks like this. Uh, the D operators uh, create or unhilate an electron on in this orbital level on the dot. And you have here the epsilon n, so that's the bare dot, then the Seemann field, the sigma Pauli matrices act in spin space. And then there is a Rashford term, that's the spin orbit coupling. And it, it looks similar to the atomic spin orbit, which is uh, L dot S. Yeah? And L is basically contained in this operator. It is projected to the wave functions. And uh, here is the spin orbit coupling alpha. And so this is a vector like the, uh, like the uh, angular momentum vector, but it's projected into this uh, dot level space. So it's also a matrix, uh, uh, N by N matrix. And uh, next, the tunnel Hamiltonian, uh, you can transfer electrons from the dot to the leads. In the leads, you have electrons of type C, J is left or right, K is momentum, sigma is spin, and we have tunnel couplings T, J, N. So tunneling to the left side or to the right side into the nth dot level. And so they define N by N hybridization matrix and these hybridization matrices define the left contact or the right contact. New knot here is the density of states in the leads. And finally, the BCS Hamiltonian, you probably have all seen it, kinetic energy, and then here's the pairing term with the pairing gap and the order parameter phase. So that's the full model. And you see it's quadratic in the fermions. So there are no quartic terms, no interaction terms. So in principle, at least you can get an exact solution for the Josephson current. I will discuss this solution in what follows for the uh, case that the magnetic field is along uh, the, the contact, so along the X direction. Turns out there is no Josephson, anomalous Josephson effect in the perpendicular direction. So that's why I focus here on this most advantageous direction. But uh, you may, if you're familiar with uh, topological systems exhibiting Majorana physics, you will uh, recall that the ingredients for Majoranas are exactly the same as what we have here. Superconductivity, Seemann field, and spin orbit. So with the same model that we have here, you can also get Majorana states, but for that case, you would need to, to, to align the B field with the Y direction for optimal uh, Majorana production. So the topological Josephson effect would be optimized by this field direction and absent for this direction. So in a sense, anomalous Josephson effect and topological Josephson effect are just two sides of the same coin. Now it's contained in the same uh, model. So uh, after technical step, you arrive at this uh, result for the current phase relation. That's exact, uh, but complicated. It's a trace lock, so essentially a determinant of a 4n by 4n matrix. n was the number of levels that we have. And the 4 comes because we have now Pauli matrices in spin space and Pauli matrices in Nambu or particle hole space and uh, we don't have to go through the details of these expressions. There is one matrix contains the, the energies epsilon n, y here contains uh, the phase difference across the junction and the hybridization matrices and this set matrix contains uh, 
uh, spin orbit vectors and uh, magnetic field vectors. Let me just write them down. So the spin orbit vector uh, uh, is given by this. So it's uh, similar to the small a vector. This is a vector of real anti-symmetric matrices. And because uh, the smallest n you can have with a non-zero anti-symmetric matrix is n equal to two. It means this vector will be zero if n is equal to one. You need at least two dot levels for the spin orbit interaction to be activated. So that's case like alpha, spin orbit, and as a magnetic field vector of real n by n symmetric matrices, that's case like the magnetic field. Okay, so we have this exact expression, but uh, what to do with it, it's pretty complicated. You can't read of much. You can see that the anomalous current is zero if the product alpha B is zero. So that means you definitely need both the spin orbit and the Zeeman field if you want to have the anomalous Josephson effect. But you don't learn more. So to make analytical progress, we now assumed to have small spin orbit and weak semen. So in that case, the lowest order term will scale like alpha B, and this term is explicitly computable from this uh, expression by doing perturbation theory. So the reference point is the one with alpha B and phi equals zero. Remember the anomalous Josephson current is for small phi, but because we have to take this derivative with respect to the phase here, we need at least a linear order. And so the perturbation looks like this. This set uh, contained the alpha and the B effects. And so in the end, you have a perturbation series that looks like this. And if you check the first two orders, don't give anything. Only the third order in this expansion can give something finite. And uh, the result is uh, uh, at the end given by this expression. Gamma D here is a diagonal matrix of the hybridization matrices, and we are here away from the superconducting atomic limit. So in that case, you have this uh, relatively simple expression, There's still a trace over the dot orbital space, but you see you have the scalar product of these uh, vectors m dot a, which contain two by two matrices, uh, n by n matrices, and we have this commutator of left and right hybridization. And because M is proportional to B and R, A proportional to alpha, you see the result is indeed proportional to alpha. So we can now read off the conditions for finite junction behavior. First of all, we need to break time reversal symmetry because we need a finite, finite Zeeman field vector M. And we also need that the scalar product of M with uh, the spin orbit vector is not zero. So uh, that means B should not be parallel to the Y direction because the spin orbit vector points along X direction for this Rushmore effect. And we need a finite spin orbit vector, of course, so alpha must be non-zero and we need at least two dot levels. That's, uh, that these are the conditions we, we uh, see now, but there is a third condition. We need to have this, what we call the broken chirality condition gamma L and gamma right must be non-commuting matrices. Yeah? So in a sense, it's a non-abelian process hopping from the left lead into the dot and then out and going back. Yeah? That's a different, that there must be a difference in these uh, processes. This needs broken inversion symmetry and at least two dot levels. Yeah? So these are the conditions summarized in this relatively simple expression. And uh, we have checked from the numerics for the full expression that if you go to higher orders in, in, uh, in the tunneling or in, in, this, in this alpha B, uh, there is no new condition. So this is the condition that really governs everything. And it turns out also in the interacting case. So these are the crucial conditions we need to fulfill. And uh, of course, interactions can then change the magnitude of the anomalous uh, supercurve, but they will not uh, give new existence requirements. Let me give a, a basic explanation for what's happening here in, in this anomalous uh, supercurrent. Uh, and I consider the case with uh, 
at just two orbital levels. So here on the left side, we have the left superconductor. Here we have the right superconductor. In the center, you have the quantum dot with two orbital levels, one and two. And we want to consider the transfer of a Cooper pair from left to right in a sequence of steps for zero phase difference. And uh, the spin orbit and Zeeman field between to lowest order in alpha B. In that case, uh, we can treat it by a Hamiltonian correction, so a perturbation that looks like this. Since the B field is along the X direction, it involves the sigma X and also the spin orbit involves the sigma X, so it flips the spin. The B field is diagonal. This is the second space is the orbital level space. So the magnetic field doesn't change the orbital level, but the spin orbit flips the spin and flips the orbital. So it has this anti-symmetric form. The only uh, matrix element of AX is the one, two matrix element. And that's proportional to alpha. And for simplicity, let me here for this uh, uh, argument assume real valued uh, tunnel amplitudes. So let's see what happens here. And I look at a specific process. And then on the right side, I look at the time reversed uh, partner process for going from right to left. So in the first step, let's transfer a downspin into this uh, level number one and then into the right superconductor. Then uh, comes the up spin here, also into the one spin. Now we act with the spin orbit, which flips spin and changes orbital level. And we act with the magnetic field. So it's always alpha times B. Yeah? So this process ends up with an up spin in level two. And now we transfer this out and form the Cooper pair on that side. So this gives a correction to the uh, transmission uh, amplitude T left to right. And this correction is written down here. So we have from the first process, the product of these amplitudes. And the second one has a T left uh, one and T right two with this product. And now you go through the time reverse process. So you first go in, you exactly go in the reverse order here and you find this expression. And now we want to know what does that mean for the anomalous uh, supercurrent. So for the supercurrent, we get uh, the supercurrent contribution by multiplying this T, uh, these T corrections with the velocity. So the first one you see, you can write it in terms of our hybridization matrices in this form. And the second one, you have the negative uh, of the velocity because it's a process that goes from right to left but there was also a sign change in A. So the total thing is exactly identical. So the time reverse processes are identical and add up. That's very unusual. Normally time reverse partners at zero phase just cancel out. Yeah, but from this argument, you, you can hopefully see that uh, there are processes that really interfere constructively. And if you sum all the uh, processes that are possible, you end up with this expression. So for instance, gamma L11, gamma R12 is this product. L11, R12 uh, yeah, is still this one. And therefore, three more such processes. And if, if you uh, do all the algebra properly, you see this is a matrix element of the commutator. So indeed, you need uh, this condition. And uh, this has been observed in, uh, in experiments by Kaugenhofen's group in Delft. Uh, so what they did is a similar experiment to what I showed you before for this observation of the zero pi transition, which was for an n equal one uh, dot. And as you just learned, for n equal one, you will never get anomalous uh, Josephson physics. You need at least n equal two levels on the island. And so they had here an indium antimonide nanowire, so as opposed to carbon nanotubes, because indium antimonide has a very strong spin orbit coupling. So here you have this dot, and there are finger gates, three different gates. Uh, so you can put different gate voltages onto them to, to manipulate the contacts, uh, so the transmission uh, energies on this. 
there's an in-plane magnetic field and again a squid geometry. So these are superconductors, niobium, uh, titanate, nitride. And uh, what they uh, measure is essentially the voltage across such a squid under constant current. And they, are, they can vary the flux for this, so the phase across, the, uh, across this dot. And they can vary these gate voltages to see uh, different regimes of uh, this quantum dot. You know? And indeed, they have seen gate tunable, phi not shifted uh, current phase relations, that's uh, shown here. So in this color scale plot, uh, the color scale encodes this voltage. And uh, uh, on that scale, you have a gate voltage. So you can basically tune the energy levels for the uh, tunnel couplings in the system. And here is basically the phase difference. That's the magnetic flux. So you see periodic features. Uh, and if you go at this value of the gate voltage and plot this curve, you see effectively the current phase relation at this reference point. And you see at that one, you have a shift, but it's not pi, but it's only 0.7 pi. Yeah? And so that's this phi naught shift different from zero or pi. And uh, uh, if you repeat this for different magnetic field orientation, you get here this phi naught as a function of the angle of the magnetic field. At these angles, they have a shift of pi, which is uh, equivalent to zero. So it's no anomalous Josephson effect in these two points. In our uh, 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 coordinates, that means the magnetic field was in the y direction where you, uh, there should be any anomalous uh, uh, Josephson effect. Is maximized in the opposite, uh, the perpendicular direction. So there have also been later uh, experiments that have uh, further refined this understanding of this anomalous uh, Joseph effect. And uh, let me now show uh, data for the current phase relation that we obtained uh, from this full expression, the numerically exact uh, expression. And we take two levels. Parameters are specified here, typical parameters, and we show the current phase relation. Yeah? So phase from zero to two pi for different magnetic fields. Yeah? And uh, there's a finite spin orbit coupling, uh, as you see here. And these parameters are chosen such that the commutator of gamma left with gamma right is not zero. So for the magnetic field point three, for instance, you get this current phase relation, it's almost sinusoidal, a little bit tilted, and you clearly see there is a finite anomalous supercurrent at zero. Yeah, so this is an anomalous Josephson effect. And uh, if you look at the anomalous current versus alpha, at this value of B, the dash line is the analytical result derived for small alpha B. And you see it fits pretty well, the exact result uh, up to about 0.5. Of this parameter. Now, the interesting point is if you go, for instance, to B of 0.7, then you get a, a, a much more complicated uh, uh, shape of the current phase relation. These jumps come because of crossings of Andreev states, and then you switch the branch. And uh, if you now look at the maximum possible supercurrent, which would be at phase pi in the positive direction. So for positive current, you have something like uh, 0.2 in these units. In negative direction, you see the, the current is uh, maximal in the opposite direction around this value uh, of, the set of the phase difference. And if you look at it, it's around 0.16. So you have a different current, a critical current for the right and for the left moving. That's already in our 2009 paper. And uh, if you have such a, uh, such a situation that the critical currents for right and left directions differ, and this can only happen if you have a non-sinusoidal current phase relation. Yeah? So if it's just sine of phi plus phi naught, obviously the right and left direction have the same uh, critical current. So if this is if this is possible, let's say the critical current in the in the left direction is smaller, then there is a regime or a window of currents in between these two, where the current can only flow in one direction, and that's a supercurrent. So a dissipationless current flowing in equilibrium. 
This is called the superconducting diode. And uh, if something like that happens, basically you have dissipation, there's rectification. So you make a supercurve and go only in one direction. And uh, this has been observed in different setups. And uh, it is clear uh, the anomalous Josephson effect is a prerequisite. So it is necessary ingredient, but it's not sufficient because you see directly if it's just sine phi plus phi not, if it's a sinusoidal current phase relation, you will not have the effect. So in general, you need high transparency and non-sinusoidal current phase relation to have such effects. And this is a cartoon of this, uh, this behavior. So the right movers are carried by uh, the Bose condensate or the Cooper pair condensate. And uh, uh, in the other direction, it can only go by uh, quasi particles. So there will be a much, much smaller uh, current. And evidently, this has a, a great application potential. So let me use the last uh, three or four minutes uh, to discuss interaction effects in such phi not junctions. So we can add interactions by means of a charging energy. So with the energy that penalizes uh, adding too many electrons onto the dot, the total number of electrons on the dot would be measured by this operator N with respect to some chosen uh, parameter that you can regulate by so even in the presence of interactions, you can write down a formally exact expression for the anomalous supercurrent. And uh, this doesn't tell you uh, much, but it, it is useful for extracting general symmetry relations that hold even in the presence of the interaction. And from that one sees, for instance, if you apply a time reversal operation and consider the current, the anomalous current at zero phase difference as function of the left and right hybridization matrices and B and alpha, and now you do time reversal, it reverses only the magnetic field and uh, it must reverse the current. So you have this symmetry relation that tells you immediately that uh, this current must be odd in the magnetic field. If you do uh, the spatial inversion, you, you exchange left and right hybridization matrix, reverse the sign of B, reverse the sign of alpha, and reverse the sign of the current. And from this, you can again extract the same condition as for you. But of course, the absolute magnitude of, the, uh, uh, of this anomalous current will be affected by interactions. So to really uh, compute something, we have studied two limiting regimes. One is the so-called core tunneling regime in uh, which the U is large and U is small gamma. So in analogy to the pi junction, you do fourth order perturbation theorem in the tunnel couplings and you get a sinusoidal phase relation that can show phi not junction behavior, but of course no rectification because it is sinusoidal. And you can write this equivalently as an anomalous part that goes like boson phi and a normal part that goes like I zero and the critical current is simply the square and the sum of the squares, the square root of it. And we have analytical expressions for, for these components. And the second limit where you can make progress is the atomic limit where delta is the biggest scale in the problem. And then you effectively have uh, for the complete system an effective dot Hamiltonian, dot Hamiltonian where uh, the pairing uh, is encoded in, in such a term here. And let me show here in just a few plots. So the anomalous uh, supercurrent in the B alpha plane. So here's B, here is spin orbit and Red means positive and uh, blue negative anomalous current in units of the critical current. You see it's zero if alpha B is zero. Either spin orbit or magnetic field vanishes, you have no anomalous current and it's maximized along these lines. And that's the interacting case. Uh, uh, and we see the, uh, the current is odd in the product alpha. More interestingly, uh, we can observe uh, a phenomenon that we uh, link to spontaneous time reversal breaking. So in that case, uh, consider this plot here. 
we have a certain number of parameters, but uh, these blue curves show the anomalous supercurrent as a function of the magnetic field. And the remarkable thing is that uh, you get here these cusps near zero magnetic field. And then it jumps down and there's another cusp. Now these cusps are actually artifacts of perturbation theory. So perturbation theory just breaks down at that point. But uh, uh, higher orders can be shown to smear these uh, cusps and uh, basically flatten uh, that. So the, the, the true physics is that the anomalous supercurrent can go like signum of alpha B. So it can be dramatically enhanced by the interactions as opposed to the scaling alpha B for the non-interacting things. Yeah? So the, the supercurrent, uh, this anomalous supercurrent can be much larger if you're in an interacting case. And that's shown also here, if the B field is really tiny, and then even the, uh, the alpha, the spin orbit coupling can be tiny. Uh, here you see the same uh, jump-like behavior. Of course, the catch is you need temperatures below the, the, the Thiemann uh, field scale. Otherwise, uh, this type of uh, physics will be thoroughly smeared out. So uh, physics-wise, the interactions here break the destructive interference of different Cooper pair transfer processes that normally kill the anomalous supercurrent. And uh, to avoid the restrictions of co-tunneling, uh, which is basically just a perturbation theory in the tunneling, uh, uh, we have looked at the superconducting atomic limit and there you really find the signal alpha B. So you recover the co-tunneling for very weak tunnel couplings, but you see what happens to these cusps uh, as you uh, go close to, uh, to, the, to the jump. Yeah? So much uh, from my side. Uh, so uh, I have uh, uh, discussed in the introduction first uh, the, the simplest model with just one uh, level in the junction, in which case you can also probe interesting physics related to the condo effect and its interplay with uh, superconductivity. But the anomalous interpretation effect will not be possible in such a case. There you need at least two. Uh, dot levels, you need spin orbit, and you need these cardinality conditions. And uh, in addition, you have uh, uh, you have a, a good transparency of the junction. You can even get this superconducting diode uh, uh, behavior, and uh, this can also be dramatically enhanced by interactions. So, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Reinhold, for this very interesting story, this kind of uh, Lego of Josephson effects and how you can build anomalous Josephson effects. So we, we can now pass to the questions to the speaker. So please uh, raise your hand if you have a question. Uh, we will, let's see, oh, there is a question from Colin Benjamin. Colin, please uh, open your microphone and ask a question. Okay, thanks. Uh, I have a question. I don't uh, hear anything. Okay. Can you hear me now? now? Yeah, yeah, now I hear you. Yeah. Uh, sure. So uh, I think I heard you that you said that anomalous Josephson effect and the topological uh, Josephson uh, setup are somewhat complementary. Yes. Uh, that if you see anomalous Josephson, you won't see topological uh, Josephson um, uh, current. And if you see topological Josephson, you won't see anomalous Josephson. Well, Is that I mean, correct? For in, in general, you will see both, uh, but sort of in the extreme limit. So if the magnetic field in my case is in the y direction, I don't see anomalous Josephson, but only topological. If it's in the x direction, it's the other way around. If it's somewhere in between, you will see both, but not very strong. Uh, so that's the statement. In principle, you can have... Uh, uh, anomalous Josephson effect also in a topological phase. There is nothing that. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, in your setup, you see both for certain situations also. Yes, yes, that's the nice thing about okay. this model. It contains both okay. for the topological and uh, okay. anomalous Josephson effect. Okay. Okay. So, um, um, what, what I mean, so I couldn't get what's the reason for that. Um, means I can get it that it uh, if you see one you don't see the other, 
but for seeing both the effects, what's the reason for that? So, uh, so here, for instance, here you see there is this scalar product. So, uh, if okay. if the magnetic field is perpendicular to the spin orbit vector, okay. you, you basically kill the effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so you really want to have a, uh, as as much as possible overlap between the the magnetic field vector and the spin orbit vector. But if you go through the derivation for uh, for the uh, Majorana states, for instance, it's it's mm -hmm. n cross a. So it's it's really the need to be perpendicular to to get an effect in the in that case. Yeah, so okay. they're just they're just different phenomena. Yeah, yeah, that I get it. Uh, but for both to exist, um, I means what, what what would be the optimum? Uh, for both to exist, you, so you mean to say that both magnetic field as well as spin orbit interaction. I guess, uh, uh, I guess if you want both, uh, then you you select the uh, degree of um, maybe forty five degrees uh, angle between M and A, so that uh, then okay. you have still reasonable topological superconductivity and and anomalous choices. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Colin. Oh, we have a question from Rodrigo Pereira. Rodrigo, please go ahead. Uh, hi. Um, is there a difference if the time reversal symmetry breaking happens in the dot versus in the superconductor? I'm, I'm also wondering if, if what, what's the prospect of using this for uh, detecting time, re time reversal symmetry breaking in superconductors? Well, we we basically we, we talk in that paper about incipient spontaneous time reversal breaking. So we don't. Uh, so, so the reason why we say time reversal symmetry breaking is that uh, even for infinitesimal magnetic field at zero temperature, you would still get that effect. But you still need a tiny field, uh, and the catch is, of course, that um, you need a temperature below that scale. So if the temperature is above that scale, you lose the anomalous choice. So it's not a true spontaneous uh, time reversal breaking that would survive at finite temperature. It's really uh, incipient in the sense that it is on the verge of, uh, of doing it. Yeah. And I think it is more related to the Andreev state. So it's something that happens on the, on the dot you know, or, or close to the dot. But of course, you cannot think of the dot by itself. It's, it's coupled to the superconductors and the Andreev states are really a combined bound state of the, of the full system. But uh, the, the, the reason behind this uh, phenomenon is, is really in the Andreev bound state. So something that uh, is closely connected to dot physics. Okay, thanks. Hey, thank you, Rodrigo. Uh, I have a question about uh, su superconducting diode. I probably didn't understand quite well. So what, what is the direct connection with the experiments on anomalous Josephson effect? And, uh, and uh, so, so this effect that people see experimentally, how, I mean, is, is the setup somehow realizes Josephson effect? Yeah, I mean, this, this uh, let me see. Uh, where did I cite the papers? Uh, so they, they are really um, very different. So for instance, this Ando paper, I think they studied a super lattice that was artificially created with many Josephson junctions to enhance the effect. Uh, 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 and see what, what precisely they, they took. I mean, in this Strunk paper, they really took the rush bar, the spin orbit, so the spin orbit field, the, the magnetic field, it's more along the lines of what we do, and then they uh, they really try to uh, send in a current in a, in a wind. They can measure the current phase relation, so they can extract the critical currents in right and left direction. They isolate a parameter set where they have uh, different critical currents for right and left, uh, and then they send in a current uh, and really observe this. Uh, is a, a And is it? I mean, uh, this is all still in the infancy. So I mean, uh, uh, new materials uh, or new ways to optimize it uh, 
are discovered uh, basically on a daily basis. And uh, people also distinguish intrinsic superconducting diode where you require that the phenomenon is really in a single Josephson junction. That's what I uh, discuss here. That's sort of the most fundamental. But you can also play games by uh, having uh, basically circuits with many Josephson junctions and phases. And by that, you can generate uh, effectively uh, uh, non-sinusoidal current phase relations that also show such a phenomenon. That's an extrinsic uh, superconducting diode, but probably for applications that's easier to do uh, than hunt for materials with the right spin orbit coupling and so on. Okay, well, thank you. Uh, the, the goal really is to identify ways to optimize this behavior in, in uh, achieve material, robust and so on. So, uh, it's still not completely taken over by engineers, so there are still some fundamental issues one needs to understand. For instance, people uh, think about using, uh, for instance, uh, this superconducting diode then to diagnose whether it's a chiral superconductor, for instance, or chiral superconductor, you also expect similar. And so, uh, I think we will see some more very interesting developments on this. Yeah, let's hope so. Uh, are there other questions to Reinhold? Maybe I have one more question. So that's about uh, topological Josephson junction. I probably missed this in the talk. So can you just briefly comment what, what is topological Josephson junction? So topological Josephson junction means, for instance, if you have uh, uh, two P-wave superconductors. So if, if in this picture here, if these were P wave, you would have Majorana states here. Yeah? So in, in that case, uh, you can basically have a resonant and wave uh, process that transfers you or that transfers single electrons through such a junction. So and that gives a four pi periodic um, uh, Josephson current phase relation uh, because you have two different parity sectors in the game. And uh, uh, and interestingly, sort of this, this type of device with Majorana uh, uh, points or Majorana points here and here, you can construct from our model basically by just rotating the magnet. That's the, the funny stuff. Okay, thank you. There was, there was a question in the chat also from Newton, but that's about the availability of this resulting paper. So I guess that's a published paper already, right? And it's available in the archive. Exactly. Yeah. If you don't find it, just contact me. All right. Um, so I don't see other questions. So let's, uh, well, thank uh, Reinfeld for his talk. And I hope to see, see you again next week with more seminars here at the IIP. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Reinfeld.